I never liked the Speed Freak Killers. That sounds like a couple guys did too much meth and were whacked out of their minds and just went on this little killing spree and that's it. The name says nothing about the fact that these guys were the two most notorious serial killers in American history. In 99, Wesley Sherman Pine and Lauren Herzog get arrested. They were convicted of six homicides. Chevy Wheeler, 1985. Fast forward to 1998, Cindy Vanderheiden. My big question is what happened between that time? Serial killers don't go on a vacation and not kill. You know, when we went to the trial, during that time we met another family, Joan Shelley. She had a daughter that was also 16, lived close to Chevy, went missing at the same time Chevy did. However, her case was just a runaway. The mom knew in her heart that something had happened. Then it's Wes's turn to talk on the stand before he gets sentenced to death. He turns to Joan and says, Mr. Shelley, I don't know you, but I will tell you your daughter's dead. Courtroom erupts. Joan hearing for the first time that her daughter is confirmed dead. Even at that point, her daughter's death never became a homicide. It stayed a runaway case until we actually found her body in 2012. Then the case just started ballooning at that point. Many years ago, my cousin went missing. So many others did too. The cousin to Kathleen Kaljani is being accosted by two males and her and her vehicle have never been seen since. Now, Philip Martin, constant communication with the daughters of Philip Martin. They had seen father working a construction site with Shermantine, living in the same motel that Wes was staying in and has disappeared. The nude body of an unidentified woman may have been beaten to death was discovered in a cherry orchard. I started going through all the unresolved missing persons files in California that could be the work of Sherman Tyne and Herzog. The constant goal is that myself, Paul, and Buster the dog go out there and solve all these unresolved mysteries. You can count on three fingers the people that know what I know on how to find graves. In 2012, Herzog killed himself. I realized that the only way to actually get to the end of this journey is to form a relationship with mass murderer Wes Sherman Time. I'm sitting in a five by five cell with someone who's got nothing to lose, discussing anything from the weather to hunting to guns to how somebody was killed. Wes says, okay, I'll give you Cindy's body. I'll give you Chevy's body. I'll give you a well with 25 bodies in it. I'll give you a well with 10 bodies. He draws a map and he puts X's on the map. With Buster the dog. We go up and we find Cindy. We confirm where Chevy's at. We go to the next X. He says there's a well right in the middle of the driveway, 25 bodies in it. The Sheriff's Department, they intercept the map and then they go to the well. They dig the wrong well. Tonight, a conversation with a death row killer. We're digging uh, about 200, 250 yards beyond that. And uh, I don't understand why. The FBI uh, picked a spot that at this point has really come under question. Many people close to this case want to know why. Sherman Tyne says he never pointed it out. Sheriff's Department saying, no, nah, we're the experts. Wes says, OK, I'm going to tell you what they are going to find. They're going to find three women and a baby. Forensic analysis of the remains found last week in San Joaquin has revealed that the bones belong to three women and an unborn baby. How many people? Law enforcement says 26. Wes's comment is, is that you might want to multiply that by at least three. Okay, well give us a number. He goes, you really think we stopped and counted? He's writing notes, sending back, hand drawing, maps from memory. He used to sneak into these gravel pits why this is important is because it would be a way where we could bury a body here. Another note here, a guy buried in back of orchard. You have the well where he says there's 25 bodies. You have the well with 10 bodies up here. You've got two more wells that he's not really sure how many bodies were in there. In his words, these holes were filling up with bodies, so we had to keep going to other holes. Sometimes they would drive 300 miles to find the perfect person to abduct. This map just represents a small neighborhood for these murderers that operated throughout California, Oregon, Idaho, Utah, Nevada, Arizona. Wesley's numbers that there were seven 
active members of this group. That maybe were part-time serial killers. A game of what he called hunting, hunting the ultimate prey, hunting a human. All these black lines were drawn by Wesley Shermantine, representing what he would refer to as hunting grounds. Here he's got a couple little bodies. There's a potential locate here. Here was a 2X, meaning there was two victims picked up in this area. Uh, hunted, hunted. One person that I know of that's out in the public right now is a member of this group. I'm monitoring him on the side, someone that could be actively still committing homicide. Sheriff Moore is also facing questions about his handling of the search for those victims. You got four X's on a piece of paper, and you found body, body, bodies. Don't you think you have to dig the fourth hole? Aren't you legally obligated? Why didn't they go dig? Oh wait, they did. They got the FBI to dig over here. In the wrong spot. Allegations from a California lawmaker and victim's family. They claim the San Joaquin County Sheriff's Department destroyed evidence related to the so-called speed freak killers. September 7th of 2010, Wesley Shermantine wrote a letter to his sister, Barbara, explaining that if she wanted to make some money, have the sheriff dig the well on flood road there's three bodies in there, you could get the reward money. She was friends with Kathleen Galjani, who's an assemblywoman. She takes the letter personally to the sheriff of San Joaquin, hands him the letter. I turned over a letter to the sheriff's department from Wesley Shermantine to his sister saying where bodies were buried. Nothing happened. Three days later, someone from that agency goes in and removes missing persons records out of the database. You can't take someone out of the missing person system unless they're found. To the victim's family members, we're now blaming the San Joaquin County Sheriff's Department. He was murdered all over again by San Joaquin County Sheriff's Department. Galjani says she has proof the San Joaquin County Sheriff's Office removed missing persons information from the Department of Justice files, which would be a federal crime. Not only were names removed from the database, my question now is, how do you know who to remove? Because two of the people that were removed were actually found in that well two years later. So the person removing those names had knowledge of the murder? Not only knowledge of the murders, but knowledge of where they were located. And only law enforcement can do cancellation. That's a problem. It's a huge problem. A little short clip of the video taken in the bottom of the mine shaft. But it looks like this could possibly be the spine, part of the rib cage, up into the collarbone, up into where a skull. Ed Winans was a close friend of Lauren. Lauren West are in custody. John, Cindy's father, gets a phone call from Ed Winans. Hey, now that they're in custody, we need to meet. We need to talk. Ed has been a missing person ever since that phone call. Since Sherman Tyne and Herzog were in jail, who was responsible for Ed Winan's disappearance? I have it in a letter where Wes said the one thing he felt bad was how mad his father was at having Chevy buried on his property. Now, the problem with that statement is his father died before she was recovered.